One day consists of 24 hours. An hour is built up of 60 minutes, and a minute consists of 60 seconds. This 24-hour system is known to originate from the ancient Egyptians. In addition, 24 hours is the amount of time it takes for the Earth to rotate around its own axis with respect to the sun. And there's no doubt that every single person in the world has the equal amount of time as we all live at 24 hours a day. Pretty easy until now. However, I'm not fully convinced that the time I mentioned is constantly moving at the same time. As we sometimes drive at 100 kilometers per hour and run at a speed of 10 kilometers per hour, isn't it that time moves at different speeds on different occasions? Why do we have an, an entire memory from certain moments but don't even have a single memory from other times. Today, I'm going to tell you about my experiences with the speed of time. Two years ago, on the last day of April and first day of May, my family and I went to Mendoza for a, for a weekend trip. After staying in a spa hotel near the border, we headed back to Santiago on Sunday. On our way back to the border, after having lunch in a small Argentinian town, we were stopped by two cops when we were very close to the border. What happened? The frontier was closed due to the heavy snow that fell earlier in the morning. And the police didn't even know how long it would take for the frontier to open again. My family didn't expect snow in the Andes when, when planning the trip. None of us had any idea on what, on what to do with this totally unexpected situation. We came down from the mountains and headed to the Mendoza airport. Unfortunately, all the flight flights from Mendoza to Santiago for the next two days were sold out. The clock in the airport showed that it was 6 p.m. already, and if it wasn't for this misfortune, we would have already arrived at Santiago by this time. Seated down at a cafe in the airport, we all brainstormed what we could possibly do. My dad had an important conference in two days, and my brother and I couldn't miss school for too long. After a study of geography and consulting with the police in the airport, we found out that there was one other frontier down in the south that was open, which separates Chile and Argentina. This was for sure good news. But it wasn't as simple as it sounded. It was actually ridiculous. We had to drive 1,200 kilometers only to reach the border, and a total of 2,200 kilometers to finally reach at Santiago. We had to spend an entire day in the car. However, this is the only method that allowed all four family members to arrive at Santiago the next day. As I mentioned before, the other options required us to wait in Mendoza until the snow melted, and there was no telling on how long that would take. Thus, we decided to give it a shot. I could see that my dad was very nervous as he talked about how long we had to travel and the conditions of the road. All set, my dad withdrew some Argentinian money from the banking machine, and then we had dinner in downtown Mendoza. At 9 p.m., we launched our long journey. As I got in the car, I realized that the real problem with this journey was not how long it was going to take, but how on earth I was going to spend 24 hours in a car. The most I've spent in a car until this day was only 12 hours. And I remembered that it was an extremely long ride, which made me know that spending an entire day in a packed space was not going to be an easy thing to do. The silence and darkness of the Pampas' night created a totally different environment from what it was before the sun had set it. The only sources of light were from the stars up in the sky and from the car's headlights. Outside, there wasn't a single car with the exception of my family's. I closed my eyes and tried to sleep. 
I couldn't wish for anything else other than being at Santiago once I woke up. When I opened my eyes, I thought I'd slept for a while, but outside the window remained dark and only 30 minutes had passed. Hours and hours passed and the never-ending road continued. Sadly, there were only few things to do in the car. And the only things I could possibly think of was the, was the fact that there was a route six to seven times shorter if it wasn't for the snow and that we had more than 2,000 kilometers ahead of us. This made each hour of the journey painful. An hour that was spent in the car couldn't be considered equivalent to 60 minutes that is spent in an average weekend. This is a picture of when we just entered to Chile from Argentina, me and my brother. And that's a picture of my dad enjoying his short break from 24 hours of driving. So, I am a swimmer. I race mainly in the 50 and 100 meter events. The 50 meter races tend to finish in more or less 30 seconds and the 100 meter races tend to finish in about a minute. It's only a minute of pain. How can it be that hard? They might not be as easy as they sound, as time passes 10 to 20 times slower for me when I'm in the water. I train for numerous of painful hours for those small moments which makes every single aspect of the process of racing important. During those painful hours of trainings that never seem to end, I always tell myself that I would quit doing this sport at least once every practice. <laughs> This is probably only the last five seconds of the race. But it is where I run out of breath, but have to hold it, and where my muscles fatigue, but have to swim at my fastest. In other words, they're the most painful five seconds of my life. Those five seconds in the water are equivalent to five minutes outside of the water, or not comparable to any sort of time that passes by in any other occasion. So, why is time not advancing at the same speed when I'm in the water compared to when I'm not? Or when I'm in a car during an extremely long road trip? In other words, why is the same amount of time not necessarily felt to be passing by at the same speed? I came to this school in Udo in 2014 when I entered the second semester of fifth grade. Now, I'm already close to finishing my first year in high school. When I was in fifth grade, time was passing by slowly. Perhaps it was the longest semester of my years in Needle. It took so long for every weekend to come by. But sixth, seventh, and eighth, and ninth grade seemed to have passed relatively quickly. And it seems like it's not only me who thinks this way. When we get used to something and things get familiar, time seems to pass pass by faster. I've heard many elders say as we get older, times go by quicker. And many neurologists have been studying on these perceptions. Neurologists say that there are these things called neural circuits in the human brain. Neural circuits are responsible for setting the standard of time in the brain. Striatum, spiny neuron, substantia nigra, Scientists explained why these perception of time tend to happen with these words that I didn't even, haven't even heard of. I read their explanation multiple times, but honestly, I still don't understand. The main point is that from the substantia nigra of the middle part of the brain, dopamine is released when we encounter a new stimulus or an excitement. It can be a very stressful moment or a pleasurable moment. So when there is a lot of dopamine being released, the standard of time in the brain, which is the time of one's perception, passes by quickly, which relatively makes the time that is actually passing seem to advance slowly. On the other hand, when there is a low amount of dopamine being released, the global time, the time that is actually passing by, seems to pass by quickly. As people get old, their brain releases less dopamine and the ability to react to dopamine decreases. As the neural circuits 
that set up the time standard in the brain move slowly, the same amount of time can be felt to be much shorter. The slower one walks, time will be felt to advance faster. During the 24 hours where I passed by Bariloche and Temuco to finally arrive in Santiago, there must have been a lot of dopamine being released from my brain. That is why the time I spent looking at the never-ending view of the dark pampas was passing by so slowly relative to my perception. That is why every single moment of the ride is still remaining in my memory until this moment. When I am pulling the water with my arms and kicking as hard as I can, a lot of dopamine also must have been released. That is why those last five seconds of the race feel like five minutes relative to what my brain tells me, or even more definitely. That is why I can remember the last five seconds of a race better than any other part. Just as the sun and the air, time is given equally to people. At the end of the day, a day only consists of 24 hours for everyone. Now, we may ask ourselves, is it really true that time is given to everyone equally? Does time flow at the same speed to all of us? In this conference room, some people feel like it has been a long time if my talk was honestly boring. And to some people, hopefully, it might have passed in a couple of shakes. I only have 24 hours each day and three years left of high school. It may so sound like a lot, but each day is passing in a couple of shakes. I wake up on my bed and soon I realize I'm again on my bed getting ready to sleep. But my actions and what I do are what changes my perception of time. Therefore, if I can manage to make the most of each day, it shall not be a short period of time to make it a time full of experience and interest. If there are no challenges in my routine, my three years left in high school will be felt to have passed by very fast and I will be graduating without much memories. If I maintain an attitude open to challenges by pursuing to find questions and answers and trying to improve my swimming times, I believe there will be a lot of dopamine being released. That will allow me to have thousands of memories in my brain cells. As I mentioned before, we are the ones responsible for our perception of time, as it is highly dependent on how we spend time. If we feel like we have wasted time, it's our fault. There's no one else to blame. But these feelings and sensations wouldn't matter if we can at least try to enjoy and make the most out of each day. The long car drive I had. It might have not been that long of a car ride if I spent my time taking photographs or deeply observing the environment, basically making the most out of it. The last five seconds of my swimming race do not feel as long when I'm motivated. I forget about the pain and how slow time is passing when my desires to finish the race as quickly as possible dominate me, as well as the desires to beat the person next to me. If we let our perception of time to affect on how we spend time, our lives will be dependent on how we feel time. But if we can spend our time correctly and take control of, of the perception of time, we will be able to live a life where finally we have the control to time management. Thank you.